This is the Fifth Estate Winning Headlines, your media police post, brought to you from Nairobi, Kenya. On this show, we summarize some of the headlines that you might have missed this morning. But we also take a look at the political pieces that we call cartoons in this country. Today is the 12th of July, 2022, and I am AX. I am Serbia. And I am GK. In case you missed the headlines, here they are. Mm. The Daily Nation, fireworks at Sakaja Igave City face-off. Yeah. The Standard, neck and neck race, opinion poll shows. Mm -hmm. The Star, Raila DP Ruto neck and neck as mm -hmm. race titans, seeing a theme there, and the People Daily, school fees hit parents. But before we delve into the headlines today, mm -hmm. Serbia, what's your submission for us today? So today I want to discuss the paradox that is Ruto. A paradox is a situation or statement that seems possible or difficult to understand because it contains two opposite facts or char characteristics. Mm. The hallmark of Ruto's hustler narrative, apart from being populist, has been a paradox. Mm -hmm. Ruto has told us that our economic empowerment will come from bottom-up. Mm -hmm. Yet the bottom-up model is what brought Sri Lanka to its knees. Mm. Both Gotabaya, Sri Lanka's president, and Ruto have advanced the bottom-up ideology while ignoring other vital economic factors mm -hmm. present in young democratic states. Mm. And just like Sri Lanka, perhaps this bottom-up could be the reason hustlers raid state house. Ruto has told us Ataunda Serikali ya Mamamboga, Boda Boda, yet he draws the line in nominating the Mamambogas hmm. and Boda Bodas to parliament. Yes. Mm -hmm. In UDA's nomination list, the hustlers were conspicuously mm -hmm. missing from the list. <laughs> Instead, several M-Pesa allies made it to the list, including party primaries, rejects like Joyce Korir and Jaguar, who rather than accept the will of the people, mm -hmm. Ruto has decided to impose them on us. Mm. Mm -hmm. Ruto further claims to be the people's candidate, but has never been loyal to the people. Mm -hmm. Ruto was complacent in Moi's oppressive regime during his wake in 92 days. Mm -hmm. And this is not all. In every democratic milestone that our republic has achieved, mm -hmm. Ruto has always been on the opposing side yeah. and fighting to maintain the status quo. Mm -hmm. In 2006, Ruto opposed the constitution. Mm -hmm. In 2010, Ruto again opposed the new constitution mm -hmm. that brought us devolution. And this year, he fought against BBI, which advocated for inclusivity. Mm -hmm. In short, Ruto is a certified enemy of progress. <laughs> and as such has not earned any stripes to lead the nation. For the first time, we will have the state's people who fought for liberation occupying the presidency. Mm. Patriots whose sacrifice will usher in the third liberation of economic and social empowerment to Kenyans. Mm -hmm. It is this paradox that has made Ruto underestimate and insult our intelligence when he recently made several dishonest and untruthful statements. Mm. Ruto told us Uhuru is his genuine friend. And when it comes to friendship, it's all about giving support. Mm. Yet Ruto castigates the president every chance he gets. Even on the global stage. One minute he's apologizing to the president, the next minute he's very bitter with the president. For instance, Ruto asked the head of state for forgiveness in May at the National I Prayer remember. Breakfast mm -hmm. Meeting, mm -hmm. saying he may have fallen short of the expectations from the president. Mm -hmm. And less than 24 hours later, he was mocking the president in Kilifi, mm. saying that he cannot be intimidated by the system who plan to steal votes from him and that Uhuru has created a stooge, <sighs> that is Raila. Ruto needs to come clean. Mm. Don't get me wrong, disagreements are normal. Mm. According to Peter Baker's book, Days of Fire, former President George Bush and his Vice President Dick Cheney mm -hmm. were never quite friends. Mm. So much so that in 2004, Bush considered dumping Cheney from his presidential ticket. Mm. Cheney thought Bush was ill-prepared for the presidency, while Bush disliked Cheney because he thought Cheney was overbearing and in control of too much executive power. Yeah. Despite these issues in public, the two never fought. Even when they disagreed, they disagreed in private mm. because they understood that the president and the vice president have to be seen as united in all things At all times. as a matter of political stability. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Actually, we only came to know about the animosity between the two in Peter Baker's tell-all book. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What is my point here? It is bad enough to air your dirty underwear in public, but it is quite peculiar audacity to go and parade that dirty underwear in thy neighbor's living room. Mm -hmm. Ruto has publicly humiliated the president both locally and abroad. Mm -hmm. Instead of presenting a united front, he mm -hmm. criticizes Uhuru's leadership, mm -hmm. despite, uh, despite the fact that he's in the same, very same administration very that same. he is criticizing. Mm -hmm. Ruto has gone ahead to air this dirty laundry in front of foreign countries that mm -hmm. are key allies and economic partners. Absolutely. By Ruto castigating the government, he has also exposed himself since he is part of that leadership. Mm -hmm. Therefore, the question to Kenyans is this. Why would you openly vote for a walking contradiction? Wow. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So guys, mm -hmm. in my view, 
-hmm. and I'm a big fan of the game chess. And to me, politics is like a game of chess. And just like in chess, a winning strategy and a winning election strategy comes with phases. Mm -hmm. A beginning, it has a middle, and it has an end. Mm -hmm. And each of these phases are crucial to securing victory. However, a good chess master understands that there's a difference between a wannabe player and a legit player, and that all comes in the end game. Mm -hmm. After all, they say that it is a well-known phenom phenomenon that the same amateur who can conduct the middle game quite credibly <coughs> is usually perfectly helpless in the end game. Mm -hmm. Simply put, the end game is the most vital part of a chess match. Mm -hmm. It requires both precision and strategic prowess. Mm -hmm. In any other part of the game, a mistake is bad, but it is reversible. Mm -hmm. In the end game, one slight misstep, one, could easily mean the end of the game, a.k.a. you lose. Yeah. With 27 days to the election, we are now bang in the beginning of the end game. Hmm. And this is where I believe Raila and Uhuru have already destroyed William Ruto. Hear me out. Mm -hmm. Yesterday, as the star and um, standard headlines have suggested, Tifa released their latest poll. Mm -hmm. The poll shows that Raila has the lead with 42% of the vote, and Ruto is following behind with 39% of the vote. And by the way, Wajakoya has 5% support. This, my friends, is equivalent to about 780k votes if our projected 15.6 million people showed up to cast their ballots. Yeah. To put that in perspective, President Kenyatta won the last election by just 800,000 votes. And Bush won the 2000 election because of just 537 votes in the state of Florida. Mm -hmm. Every vote counts. But anyways, I digress. The same poll gave William Ruto an 11-point lead in February just five months ago, showing how significant his decline has been. Mm. In my view, although we must always take these polls with a pinch of salt, the results of these polls are very interesting. They reveal the strat that the strategy of Uhuru Kenyatta and Raila Odinga is beginning to bear fruit. Mm. The end game is beginning to reveal itself. One component of the end game, in my view, has been through Uhuru Kenyatta using one of his biggest weapons in his arsenal, that is, his charm. On Friday last week, President Kenyatta hosted thousands of Gemma religious leaders in a prayer and worship session. He was even evidently moved when the group sang my favorite song, which is Mondo Ereri. In the same event, the president completely destroyed Ruto's attempts to paint him as a coward and told his people why he considered stepping down in the last election, because he chose country above personal gain. He did. That, my friends, is charm. Mm -hmm. President Kenyatta also recently met with the Akorino community and showed dignity and support to a group who have often been mistreated by the wider Kikuyu community. Mm -hmm. That, my friends, is charm. As an amateur on his first attempt at the presidency, William Ruto provided a solid opening strategy and his middle game was also effective. The Hasta narrative had captured the attention of the masses and Bottoms Up was a catchy slogan. However, as time ticks on, his rise has been reversed. The Hustler Nation has been seduced with the Bangi candidate, and his Gemma seduction has been broken by the Martha effect. This is why, as the endgame continues, William Ruto has begun to panic and make moves out of pure desperation, as, as Serbia, you said, instead of the carefully calculated steps demanded in the endgame. And I'll end with just one word or, or two words. It is becoming checkmate. <laughs> <laughs> So today I want to switch tracks for a bit and I want to talk about free and fair elections in Kenya. Okay. Or rather the myth of free and fair elections in Kenya. A myth busted by none other than the IEBC. The very body charged with guaranteeing free and fair elections has proved itself to be little more than incompetence incarnate. Mm -hmm. Now allow me to explain by way of a very particular disease. It is called management by crisis. Okay. Mm -hmm. Management by crisis is a disease where a manager attempts to deliver a project in a challenging time or a crisis. Mm -hmm. This crisis can be manufactured or it can be the result of events unrelated to the manager's actions okay. like COVID mm. or the result of managerial stupidity. In either event, the purpose of a management by crisis is to give more resources to the manager. Okay. This resource could be more power or it could be more money. Mm. This is because in times of crisis, people do not, or other people care more about the job getting done than they do care about what it takes to get the job done. Mm. And so they will do anything up to and including writing blank checks in order to see to the project's completion. Okay. 
but this is just a ploy from the manager. Mm. This is what happened with WeWork and Adam Newman. Okay. WeWork was a real estate company that provided co-working space. Long story, long story short, WeWork owed $47 billion Oof. in rent and had absolutely no idea where they were going to get the money from. Okay. Enter the then CEA and CEO and founder, Adam Newman. Okay. He was able to raise billions from his investors, but instead of using the money to cover rent, Newman used it to make himself stinking rich. Mm. By the time WeWork collapsed in 2019, Newman was worth $14 billion Ooh. from a network net worth of zero. <laughs> what does Newman have to do with our elections? Absolutely nothing. Mm. But is it possible that the IEBC is using management by crisis to amass power? Mm. If so, we must ask two questions. Okay. One, how have the IEBC threatened the credibility of this year's elections? And two, who is their manager? Mm. Allow me to answer the first question. In the last month, the IEBC all but guaranteed the Supreme Court will nullify the election results. Mm. Time and time again, they have failed to address the flaws that led to the nullification of the 2017 election results. Mm -hmm. And one such issue was the transmission of these results. Mm -hmm. Now, when the IEBC tested their um, submission technology or transmission te technology in early June, mm -hmm. only 1,200 of the 2,900 polling stations successfully transmitted data. Ooh. This is a failure rate of 59%. If the same failure rate is recorded during the actual election, this would mean over 27,700 polling stations would fail to transmit results. Mm. Now, if in 2017 the Moraga court held that 10,000 polling stations were enough to justify the nullification of election results, mm -hmm. what will they say about over 27,000? And it remains to be seen if the IEBC has fixed these flaws 27 days before the next election. Mm. This failure must be read in conjunction with Chebukati and his commissioner's alleged involvement in an election rigging scheme involving our ballot papers. The scheme was reported in the Star and in the Nation. Mm -hmm. When both of these are read together with IEBC's other strings of shortcomings, management by crisis emerges one that erodes the promise of fair and free elections. Mm. Every mistake, every failure, every oversight has made it more and more likely that the Supreme Court will nullify the election results, thus confirming IBC's failure to do their only job, deliver free and fair <laughs> elections, 100% of the time, because remember, they failed in 2017. Mm -hmm. This failure creates a background of acceptance for rigged elections, mm -hmm. where democratic legitimacy is not built out of popular participation, but out of mastery Absolutely. of electoral processes. Mm. Put differently, moism without moi. Only one question remains, who is their manager? Mm. Remember that a management by crisis is deployed to benefit someone and aid in their quest for power. Mm -hmm. So who benefits when the IEBC's incompetence is laid bare? Mm. Let us follow the breadcrumbs. The CEO of the IEBC, or the manager in this management by crisis, is a fellow called Marjan Hussein Marjan. Mm. Yet in another life, Marjan worked very closely with David Chichir, Ruto's current chief of staff. Mm. In light of these connections, we need to ask who is the true manager of these elections? I will leave that for you to answer. Wow, wow, wow. So, uh, he has only one job. <laughs> <laughs> one job. <laughs> There you go. We have a three-part <coughs> criteria that we use to judge the headlines for you. We ask ourselves these three very simple questions. Mm -hmm. Is the headline topical or speculative? Is it uh, repetitive or groundbreaking? Finally, is it thoughtful or just plain lazy? So I'll reread the headlines for you before we get into them. The Daily Nation, fireworks at Sakaja Igada City uh, face-off. The Standard, neck-and-neck -neck race, opinion poll shows. Mm -hmm. The Star, Raila, DP, Ruto, neck-and-neck -neck as race titans. And the People Daily, school fees hit parents. So uh, mm -hmm. they're all talking about very topical issues, especially the, the Daily Nations talk about the gubernatorial debate that happened yesterday, the standard and the star. To me, I feel the neck and neck, it can't be a coincidence that they're both neck, neck and neck. neck. Mm. <laughs> but I, I wonder, what do you guys think about the headlines? So one plagiarized the other. Mm. I think but so. it's true, yeah. they're neck and neck, 39% and 42%. Mm. Yeah. Okay, so are any of these headlines are calling your name? No, not really. Not really. So we're going to toss all the headlines? Yes. Okay, so all the headlines are tossed. There Bye. you go. Okay, on to the political pieces that we call cartoons in this country, mm -hmm. where we also have a three-part criteria to break down the cartoons for you. We ask ourselves these three questions. Are the cartoons humorous or dry, satirical or pessimistic, and finally, are they effective or just plain 
lazy. So uh, I think I'll begin with the Daily Nation. Mm -hmm. You have a caricature of uh, Polycap Igave with uh, holding a broom, sweeping, wearing his, uh, his what's the, what are they called, apron. Mm -hmm. And uh, everyone is sort of focused on him. And then on the other side, uh, Sakaja is carrying a very heavy elephant mm -hmm. with a, <laughs> a degree hat. I don't know what those are called again, but the degree hat the on top. Yeah. And I, I can't tell who here is at the far corner. Uh, but it's, it's talking about the debate that happened yesterday. Um, it was an interesting debate. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. it's an okay cartoon. Nothing. Nothing. Really. Nothing. Wow. Okay. Uh, how about the star, Miss um, mm -hmm. uh, Serbia? Why don't you take us through the star? Okay, we have a caricature of uh, Igade mm -hmm. for the gubernatorial uh, debate yesterday mm. with uh, Sakaja. <laughs> so <laughs> Igade has four different hats on. Mm. He has mm -hmm. a chef. Mm -hmm. He has that one for the Ndudi people. Boda, boda. Mm. Motorcycle helmet. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. He has a construction helmet mm. and a red cap. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, Sakaja has a university cap jumping from his head. I think it can't <laughs> stay on his head. Mm. What does that really mean? Mm -hmm. So um, the cartoon is looking at some of the key themes mm. of, uh, each, uh, of each candidate's process. Mm -hmm. I think, uh, and then there is uh, a statement here, a jack yeah. of all trades and a master of none, mm. Mm -hmm. which to me is much better than a master of one. Uh, mm. <laughs> so Sakaja is smiling. Mm -hmm. I don't know why that is. Maybe he has got, he's smiling, he has gotten away with his uh, degree mischief. Who knows? But mm -hmm. anyway, what, what we can say is Igade was tr entrusted with billions mm -hmm. and yes. so far he has not been mentioned in a scandal. Mm -hmm. And of course he's left his uh, plum job at equity mm -hmm. to come work here while the other one left his what school, dropped out of school. <laughs> so it's up to Kenyans to know who you <laughs> trust with your leadership. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, uh AX, why don't you conclude with the standard? All right, so for the standard cartoon, it mm -hmm. seems like Gado wants to take us a little bit regional. Um, so this, the topic of the cartoon is Museveni and the succession that, um, politics that are going on in Uganda right okay. now. Mm -hmm. The cartoon depicts Museveni's son, Muhozi, in a baby chair. He is before military generals, and he appears to be like making his case mm -hmm. to succeed his father, as, he, as evinced by the sign he is holding that mm -hmm. says M7, M7 for M7 president. Mm -hmm. M7 Junior for president, 2026. Mm -hmm. um, now, around Muhozi on the mm -hmm. floor are children's toys, and baby bottles. Um, now, again, the context of this is that um, according to sources on the ground, a lot of um, the army does support mm -hmm. General Muhozi's presidency. Mm -hmm. There are a select few who are a bit mm -hmm. about it, mm -hmm. which is a bit, it's interesting that Gadu does not reflect some empty chairs, uh -huh. some questions maybe mm -hmm. on the faces of the generals, <laughs> but they also don't seem too pleased <laughs> no. to, be, to be dealing with him right now. Mm -mm. Mm. Okay, yeah. so th th okay, so do we have any winning headlines, or should they all sort of be tossed as well? I think toss them. Toss them all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have no winning cartoon survey. You can toss those uh, cartoons to the side. There mm -hmm. you go. So before we conclude, we'd like to remind you to don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're also on your TV screens. Um, we're on Pang Free to Air, Go TV, and Start Times. And don't forget to hit that like button on YouTube as well. Mm -hmm. Before I leave, I'll leave you with a quote from uh, the Bible. <laughs> Proverbs 29, 18. Where there is no vision, the people perish. Perish. <laughs> <laughs> Perish. <laughs> I tell you it's a church, so. God bless. <laughs>